the doctor doesn't know where, whether you're going anywhere or not. He doesn't ask you when you go to surgery, what do you do with your time, or are you happy, or That's anything like that. He hasn't got time. Yeah, but there yeah. was a consultant was on duty, and he checked me, and he, they saved my life that day. <laughs> They'll take me in in April, April. but I'm not holding my breath. So I was involved from the outset with everything, with choices, with options about how I was to be treated, where I wanted to be treated, the type of treatment. So most doctors don't know this place exists anyway. I went to see him. I was unwell and he, he said I put weight on. I said, yeah, because I go to a house, I go to a, a day centre. I think it was first starting to live again, ma'am. In February 2012, over 100 people in Salford over the age of 55 were interviewed about their experiences of health and care. To reach people from all wards of Salford, we visited support groups, housing association schemes, drop-in centres and health centres, and employed a variety of media collection tools, such as giving people cameras to record video diaries, group and one-to-one -one interviews, and street interviews. The results reflect the successes of and frustrations with health and care providers, and offer a richness of insight into the needs of the person on the street. Here are a few selected highlights. Well, <clears throat> one of the things that the, that the NHS are doing is that they've developed this pathway and within this pathway there's all these services and if you can imagine, say, um, um, a big bunch of balloons all with uh, some string hanging from it, well, and all, each, each length of string leads to a particular service or some advice, then they are trying to create an integrated service, that's the big buzzword in the NHS. Well that integration only works if someone brings all these strands together and holds them together and says, what service do you want? Right, that's that one, that's this one. It works for the NHS and the NHS group, but they need to involve the benefits people as well because the people who work in the benefits office don't know about stroke. You know it exists, but they don't know about it. And even the medical people who work for the for the benefits people don't really understand stroke. And when you consider it's the third biggest killer in this country, behind heart and heart disease and uh, cancer, then it, it, people should be made to realise just what's involved. I think sometimes also. With the privacy, um, it's the lack of privacy. It's also the reception area asks questions, uh, quite private questions, um, and within earshot of everybody. Mm. You know, so um, they should be, you know, mindful that maybe you don't want to ask them, answer them questions. Um, I don't think it's a friendly place. I think we've lost. Um, a lot of the um, old GP style, you know, you, you knew, GP knew who you were, you knew who your GP was, yeah, you know, um, and that's gone, you know. And Disability awareness is not creating awareness for me, it's creating awareness to those people who are not disabled, who are professionals, but do not understand disability. They may have seen thousands and thousands of people, but that does not make you understand what disability is unless you wear the coat of disability. I need support that is tailored to my needs. I have tried to get that support through OT uh, or adult social services. Unless and until the OT authorizes I cannot get help. I cannot buy an electric wheelchair because I have no ramp outside my door. I have tried to get housing to fit a ramp for me. Again, it's the same thing where the OT won't authorize. The unfortunate thing is that the OT comes to your house and they're there for 10, 15 minutes. A person like that cannot make a sound judgment of your needs. It is the wrong way of assessing a person. I wish that they would let a person with 
fibromyalgia assess a person who has who suffers with fibromyalgia there should be training even if they educate us disabled people so that we can go out there and do the job ourselves or if an OT is going out to meet a client who has got a condition maybe another suggestion would be that there should be volunteers who go with the, the, the OT or physiotherapist or whoever when they are going to assess. I've had a carer that used to come to my home and I used to let him have a drink and a scone but I found him once and I thought I'd have several £10 notes going missing out of my purse and when I came out the toilet one day they were stuck with my purse in his hand oh. and I stopped having him as a carer coming to my own. But they still employ him, right. they, they do. Did you report him? I yeah, report, I report, 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 report him. These clinicians, this is not about criticism, they look at the, the chemical and the physical treatment. In, in the social model and the way in it, it's the expert patient program and, and all sorts of other similar projects look, it's the way it affects people and the way people live their lives, you know, so I've, I've got a, a list of, of, of things here, so it's about looking at issues like physical activity and about medication, about managing fatigue and, and working with health, health professionals, helping people to understand the relationship between patients with long-term conditions who need to develop a partnership with, with the GP rather than simply being given a prescription and there's an enormous difference because the patient then needs to understand how that interacts with, with their lives. I'd say that um, it saved the money keeping this place open yeah. because if it closed, even for the social members, they'd have a lot more people going to the surgery. Yes, they, yeah. would, they would. They would, because yeah. we'd go and do lala. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be there at yeah. home going out of our minds. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.